Get ready for the splash live. Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the splash live. Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live. I am Larry Nellen. Thank you to everyone from West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake for tuning in on this wonderful Wednesday morning. The Splash Live is Greater West Bloomfield's very own daily TV and radio streaming show. Watch us live Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 10 a.m. on Civic Center TV. Catch us on Comcast Channel 15, AT&T Channel 99, on the web at civiccentertv.com, on Civic Center TV's Facebook app, and you can even listen live on 89.3 Lakes FM. The Splash Live is part of Civic Center TV and Lake FM's 90 minutes of live local programming. Taking a look at the weather today, wow, the beautiful fall weather continues with mostly sunny skies and a high of around 75 today. Tonight, the clouds will be rolling in a bit with a low of 54. And then on Thursday, cloudy skies turning to showers late in the day with a high of 69. Looking at some local headlines today, well, today is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the holiest day on the Jewish calendar and also one of the most somber commemorations of the year. It marks the end of the Days of Awe, a 10-day period that begins on Rosh Hashanah, the other main high holy day which celebrates the Jewish New Year. Yom Kippur in English means Day of Atonement and focuses on repentance and asking forgiveness for wrongs that may have been committed over the past year. Jewish adults observing the holiday typically will fast for around 25 hours starting at sundown the night before. To our Jewish friends and viewers, we here at the Splash Live wish you a meaningful fast. Well, the West Bloomfield Lakers football team got back on track last Friday night with a decisive win over Lake Orion, 41 to 14. Our own Tyler Keeft had the chance to talk with star receiver Samaj Morgan and asked Samaj what it was like to fill in at QB in the big win over the Dragons. Well, I feel like, you know, uh, Rick got hurt, our quarterback got hurt, so I'm the type of person that's going to, like, step up whatever the team needs. So they needed, they needed somebody who was going to come in and make plays and be a leader, so that's what I needed to do, and that's what I did. And it's not unfamiliar territory for you uh, playing quarterback. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been playing quarterback my whole life. Uh, I just started playing receiver in high school, so it really was a uh, first nature, uh, wide receiver, second nature. And so for you, was, wh which one of those transitions would you would you say was tougher for you or more challenging for you, going from being a quarterback up until high school or transitioning into the st to one of the starting quarterbacks last week against Lake Orion in at a high school level, at the varsity level, against a competitive team in the Dragon? Uh, see, with me, uh, when I was younger, my dad, like, really, he just taught me, like, the whole game of football. He didn't teach me how to just play one position. So, like, growing up my whole life, I've been playing a lot of, like, lots, of, lots of positions, you know what I'm saying? So when I got to high school, I had to change. It was real easy. I had the work ethic, so I just go work out with Coach V, you know what I'm saying? He got me better at receiver. And then the um, transition last week from quarterback, from uh, receiver to quarterback, it was really just easy because, you know, in practice, I throw a lot. You know, we run some trick plays in practice, but we usually don't run them a lot in the game. So it was really just easy. But a lot of things that was challenging for me was, like, learning uh, line calls and stuff like that on pass plays. So overall, it was okay except for like one little, you know, hiccup with the line calls and all that. Coming into this week against Lake Orion, it was a, a tough situation. Coming off a really, in, a really interesting game at Rochester Adams, a game that was frustrating in many ways for, for many different people on the field, some issues off the field as well. So for your team, how important was it for you in, in a leadership position, but really for everybody to work hard to come together uh, for that homecoming game against Lake Orion and reshift your focus to going forward and putting Rochester Adams behind you? Uh, just like you said, it was our homecoming game. We really didn't want to lose at home on homecoming. So um, we all knew that we had to come with a better mindset. We had a meeting at the beginning of the week last week, and I think it changed all of our mindsets, you know, going into practice last week. So um, we all knew. We was uh, we was all in a four-way tie. Us, Adams, um, Lake Orion, and Clarkson, we was all in a four-way tie. And if we lost that, we probably would have been number four or something like, I mean, number two, whatever. I don't know how it really go, but. We was all in the four-way tie, so we had, we knew, we understood like what was at, at stake during that game. Knowing that you're a, com a competitor here for the state championship, as West Bloomfield is every year, always in the mix. You're having a great season individually, you are as well. And then you look at at your future. You're looking at going to Ann Arbor next year, playing at the University of Michigan. They're having a great a great season, much to the chagrin of the Spartan, uh, <laughs> who's having a difficult year. Uh, but that's uh, tough time. I mean. Plenty of defense here at least, so that's at least. 
a relief. Uh, but Samaj, looking into the, to the next level, knowing that you're going to be going into an environment where you're going to be competing for a championship there as well, how does that help you to center yourself this season and really working hard to put yourself in the best position to have a great game week after week and therefore putting your team in a better position to win week after week? Uh, uh, so like the 2020, uh, 2020 year that we won the state championship, we had some great leaders on that team. Uh, Donovan Edwards, Maxwell Harrison, and Jordan Hoskins. So like really, we just trying to uh, walk in their footsteps because you know they the only ones that did that before. You know what I'm saying? We was on the, me and Amir was on the first team to ever win a state championship in history at this school. So we seen that leadership. Now we just trying to take after them. You know what I'm saying? Build up something that we know we can. You have a great relationship with them. Also, uh, the, you know, the Elboys pride runs very deep. Uh, through the alumni of West Bloomfield High School, and having been so heavily involved in that team that did get to the state championship and having those lines of communication open, what do you say to the guys uh, down the line on the team, the younger guys on the team, the guys coming up and emerging in the leadership positions, about what this team has to do to take it to the next level throughout the rest of the season and truly compete with the best of the best of the championship in D1? You know, me is really just stressing. Like, my team, I really stress, like, being a dog, bro, had the heart. You know what I'm saying? You don't just let nobody just come dog you out. So, like, I feel like thing we need to do, we just all need that heart in our chest, that big old heart in our chest that don't want to lose, that don't want to settle for nothing but number one. And I feel like we all starting to get that mentality that some of us on our team has. Not all of us on the team got that mentality, but once we all get it, it's going to be dangerous. And it's going to be tough for any team to compete against West Bloomfield when they're playing at their best. West Bloomfield is one of the best teams, if not the best team, in the state of Michigan. Samaj, anything else you'd like to say going looking forward to the rest of the season or messages you have for you know, the guys on your team? Hey, I just want to shout out my whole team. We coming. Anybody watching this, we coming. We coming for that number one spot. They're going to know by the end of the year. This Friday, the Lakers host the Oxford Wildcats, who continue their emotional season following the tragic events of last November. As always, tune into the game live on Civic Center TV and WBTV. And if you don't have time to sit down and watch, listen on the go at 89.3 Lakes FM. Game time starts at 7 o'clock with pregame at 6. We're going to go to a short break here on the Splash Live, and when we get back, we'll talk with West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Steve Kaplan. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. You know, it's peaceful, it's quiet, and the noise and stress of life can sometimes disappear. It's the Great Lakes water, and so what people do ends up in our waterways. It's for our health and safety, it's for our economy, it's for protecting the environment that we all enjoy and we all need to, to survive. So clearing storm drains and the areas nearby of trash and leaves helps keep them for rain only. We're all about one water in this region. We're all connected. We all have a role. Let's whoop it up for these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. And now, back to the Splash, live. Welcome back to the Splash Live. I am Larry Nyland. Well, like many, many communities in Oakland County, West Bloomfield has been a, seen a big increase in the number of deer roaming within the township borders. While some residents might enjoy feeding the deer and admiring their beauty, the abundance of deer also leads to more auto accidents, damage to landscaping and property, and more risk of Lyme disease. What can be done to make our community safer from the influx of deer? Joining us now to talk all about it is our good friend, West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Steve Kaplan. Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Larry. Good to see you as always. So can you start off by talking about some of the issues that like you've been made aware of over the years at Town Hall from the number of deer that we seem to have here in West Bloomfield? 
number of deer in the neighborhoods is proliferating. Last year, related to it, of course, we had 120 collisions between motor vehicles and deer. And in 2022, we've had 96 as of today. So deer, number of deer has increased in the neighborhoods and that means they're stopping on gardens, eating vegetables, making a mess of people's backyards and gardens. And Steve, um, I know you know that there's a lot of people in the community who they enjoy feeding the deer, um, but it, it could lead to more problems. I mean, it could lead to them making that their home and then they reproduce and then, you know, we have more deer causing other issues. Larry, excellent point on your part. Deer, remember, let's say Larry lives in West Bluefield. He leaves strips of food for the deer and they enjoy the morsels that you left behind. And the next day they'll revisit you because they'll remember the food source. Yeah, I have a neighbor who will feed the deer, but it, it, it brings other animals. So once the deer are done for the night, then you see, you'll see like a, a, a beaver come by, you'll see raccoons come by, and, and it leads to other problems, it just does. Larry, we have considered enacting an ordinance which would prohibit, not prohibit, which would discourage people from feeding the deer. Several problems with the number one, do we really want to criminalize our residents when in good faith they're feeding the deer? Secondly, it's essentially unenforceable. How are we going to catch the violators? Are we going to have undercover officers hiding near the food source in order to, to apprehend <laughs> the, the resident? Oh, it's, I, I know a few communities, including Rochester Hills, do have such an ordinance, but I don't think the township board is interested in criminalizing that behavior. So um, can you talk about um, what exactly is the Oakland County Community Deer Coalition, what I think, which I think was formed back in 2021? Right, and to give credit to Oakland County, Farmington Hills, and yeah, you know, Oakland County and Farmington Hills for spearheading this coalition, we joined the coalition immediately. We enacted an, or a proclamation indicating that we do want to participate, and, and we have been. We've already had eight meetings they say not much is accomplished at a meeting that a, a, a camel is a horse created by a committee, but we have had good discussions on this. And ultimately there are five possibilities apart from doing nothing in terms of reducing the deer population. One of them is to kill the deer, that's obvious. Second one is to have police officers visiting the backyards of people and shooting the deer. That really isn't practical. Ann Arbor has a procedure is called culling the deer, C-U-L-L, culling the deer. And that's where they, 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 they lasso, they capture deer and they transport them to a, like a park, which is isolated and then they shoot the deer. So I don't know if our residents want that to occur. Another possibility that's being viewed is sterilization or contraceptives where food is laced with contraceptives and that would help reduce the deer population. And so um, one of the ways where they're trying to figure out what might be the best solution to this is the regional deer survey that they formulated. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. And that survey is available on West Bloomfield's website. And through November 11, any resident can complete the survey. And it would be helpful to us to determine, does the average resident or do a majority of residents want deer population to be reduced? Because there are people, Larry, who love seeing the deer. My wife, for one, she'll call me to the dining room window, say, look outside, look outside. There are four deer in our backyard. So she, she really enjoys the, the nature. And therefore, this is not a unanimous issue. I, I'd say it's probably split. I'd say many residents don't have an opinion because they have more important matters to deal with, although this, this is very important. And then some love the deer and don't want to reduce the deer population. And others think that we're overpopulated. Yeah, I remember uh, a couple of years ago when they built the new roundabout at Middle Belt and Maple, there was a huge percentage of the population that came to the meetings discussing uh, when that was going to be built, that it was going to affect the deer population in the area because so many deer crossed over, over that location. Right. Another good point by you. In terms of why are deer increasing? Well, one is that the township is now 95% built. It's developed. And that means when 
a development goes into an area which at one time was under undeveloped, obviously, then the deer are chased out, so to speak, and they then proliferate in the neighborhoods. Um, so I had the chance to uh, print out the uh, survey yesterday. It's really not that long. It only has about seven questions on it. I mean, it's just, it basically asks if, if how the deer have affected your life. Do you think it's gotten worse over the years? And if, there, if it has affected your home, do you think there's a monetary figure that you can put on it? So it's things that if people are interested in, in getting control of the situation, it's a real easy survey to fill out. Yes, and one gentleman sent a letter to the supervisor's office, a three-page letter, very well written. Obviously, he has a scientific background, but he posed some suggestions, ideas for us. So you never know. It could be just one resident has an idea that the regional coalition w would find palatable. And, you never, and it could be that ideas from residents could lead to reducing the population of deer. Um, you, I think you mentioned that like some communities, um, I know they do, did this in Rochester a couple years ago where they kind of had like a, a, an evening where they were at a field where some of these deer gathered and there was like kind of a mass shooting of these deer and it kind of set some neighbors, uh, you know, into a bit of a frenzy wondering what was going on. Is that something that you think is a possibility down the road in West Bloomfield or you're trying to avoid something like that? Extremely unlikely. For one, our ordinances ban outdoor hunting, even bow and arrow. Oh, a person would be violating the ordinance if he did that. And there is a danger to it. I, I'm sure there are some people who are marksmen, but not everybody has that skill. And an errant shot could enter a home and kill or injure somebody visiting or living in that home. Oh, well, there's a great risk in, in terms of self self action. So if people do want to uh, fill out this survey, and I'm sure we encourage everyone to do it, whether they're for favor of the deer or they want to limit the number of deer in town, how can they find that survey? Yes. So go to the West Bloomfield website. Mm -hmm. Just at Google search engine if you want, West Bloomfield Township, yeah, West Bloomfield Township, Michigan website, and then they'll find the link. It should be easy to find. It's also available through Oakland County's website. Yeah, and uh, it says on here, November 11th is the deadline to fill that out. So you do still have about a month and a half to get that done. Yes, November 11th, interesting date in history when World War One ended. Oh, November did it really? 11th. Yeah, 1919. 1918, November 11th. So I want to bring up one other thing with you, Steve. Um, every year, every fall, we have the Hazardous Waste Disposal event. It's coming up in a few weeks on Saturday, October 22nd. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The township features four events for our residents, and this includes Kegel Harbor, Orchard Lake, and Sylvan Lake. We host two household hazardous waste days per year, one in May and one in October. We've already had the one in May, obviously, but October 21, Friday, between 4 and 6 for senior citizens, 62 and older. So, Larry, you're about 40 years away from that status. Or Saturday, October 22nd, 9 to noon for anyone. And we've had great success. One year we had 1,900 vehicles between the two events. Threading is not offered during the HHW event, Larry. We, we have two separate shredding events. We just had one last weekend. We found that by separating shredding from disposal of hazardous waste, moves the line along, the wait is not as long. At one time we had cars that waited two hours, or motors that waited two hours from entering the Civic Center compact, uh, complex. By way of offering the Friday event for seniors and uh, segregating shredding from household hazardous waste day, re residents don't have to wait as long. It could be as short as a 20-minute wait. So my question to you, Steve, is, um, so I dropped some stuff off there about a year ago, and I was so happy to get that out of my garage. And then, but then I thought, well, where, where do you guys, what do you guys do with it? Where do you take it? It's, it's in, it's on the property of the town hall there, but then what happens after that? Good question. Shredding occurs on campus. We find, we find that our residents want to be assured that the shredding is not, papers, documents are not taken to a dumpster. Uh, that, that's an easy issue. And so we have the, they have the trucks, meaning USA Environmental, they have trucks, they shred on the premises. But what you're mentioning, Yes, we don't dispose of it in a landfill. We have a reputable company, USA Environmental out of Livonia, 
and, and, and they're serious about it. They, they do good work, and they probably wouldn't last in this industry if they were disposing of household hazardous waste in landfills or, or other sites. All right, Steve, well, we want to thank you for joining us today. Wish you a fabulous weekend, and thank you and all your staff there at Town Hall for doing a great job for the citizens of West Bloomfield. Thanks, Larry. Thank you for inviting me. Again, that was uh, West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Steve Kaplan joining us this morning. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a trip to the dance floor at the Fred Astaire Dance Studio. That's next on The Splash Live. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. You know, it's peaceful, it's quiet, and the noise and stress of life can sometimes disappear. It's the Great Lakes water, and so what people do ends up in our waterways. It's for our health and safety, it's for our economy, it's for protecting the environment that we all enjoy and we all need to, to survive. So clearing storm drains and the areas nearby of trash and leaves helps keep them for rain only. We're all about one water in this region. We're all connected. We all have a role. And now, back to The Splash, live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I am Larry Nylon. Well, the cold days are getting closer and closer, and that means it will be harder to exercise outdoors. Well, one place where you can always get a great workout indoors is your local Fred Astaire Dance Studio. Joining us now is the Michigan area developer for Fred Astaire, Fred Astaire Dance Studios and the studio owner of the locations in both Bloomfield Hills and West Bloomfield, Evan Mountain. Evan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Of course. Thank you for having me. So, Evan, I'm going to ask you a question that, of course, I know the answer to, but I'm sure there are a lot of viewers out there who are way too young to, they probably heard the name Fred Astaire, but they don't quite understand the impact of Fred Astaire on the dance world. Could you tell folks a little bit about who Fred Astaire was and the legacy that he left as a dancer? Well, absolutely. It's, and it's actually pretty funny because I will have people come into my uh, studio to, to talk with me about something or other, and they'll ask me if I'm Fred Astaire. <laughs> and, and um, you know, obviously don't know who Fred Astaire is, and maybe I could be his grandson. But <laughs> So Fred Astaire was probably, at his time, he was the most influential uh, dancer, uh, movie um, person, actor, singer even, um, of the 40s and 50s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. He started off on, on, um, on uh, vaudeville and with his sister and then continued into an acting career where he did musical, uh, musicals mostly. And he was the most uh, incredible dancer. Um, he influenced people like Michael Jackson would talk about it. And his uh, influence in the dance world just continued. Well, back in the 40s, because we're now celebrating our 75th anniversary for Fred Astaire Dance Studios, uh, in the 40s, he decided to start a dance studio in Manhattan, primarily focusing on ballroom dancing. And it's evolved now so that there are 230, 240 studios in the United States and around the world. Um, they're all franchise studios, and we follow the legacy of this great, um, great man who, uh, you know, who emphasized dancing, uh, and we continue to emphasize dancing in our studios and quality dancing. Now, oh, there's some pictures of my uh, some of my instructors. And uh, Evan, can you tell us a little bit about your dance background? Did you start dancing at a very young age? <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> this is, I grew up in the outfield and um, I played football and other sports and I would dance. Uh, I would take ballet classes and other uh, dance classes uh, in order to help my sports, uh, my eye hand coordination and such. So, um, but I didn't get into ballroom dancing until much later. I always enjoyed dancing, but uh, didn't really know what to do. So I started doing ballroom dancing, partner dancing. It's a, it's a different skill set. And um, as I tell people, it's just learning the fundamentals of dancing. How do you dance with a person? And, and to what music and to what song? You know, if it's, a, if it's a rumba or if it's a swing dance or it's a hustle or a cha-cha, 
or tango, you know, you, you'll be able to identify the music and then start dancing to it. So I know what to do, how to lead and how to follow. So I started off by talking about the workout benefits of dancing. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, it really is a great cardiovascular and calorie burning workout to dance, isn't it? It is, and that's probably the most obvious benefit. There's, there's actually several other benefits, uh, but the physical benefit is probably the best. Most people are the easiest to identify. Um, you know, when you're dancing, depending on the dance style, if you're doing salsa or, or swing, something more active, you could be burning up to, you know, 450 to 600 calories in an hour. And you're doing it in a fun way. I mean, like most exercise, it's got to be fun to continue it. You know, jumping on a treadmill or a, or a Peloton bike. After a while, that's not so much fun, you know, but you're moving around the floor with music and enjoying yourself and burning calories. You're also working on your, it's a low impact, as you said, but you're working on your core strength. You're working on your flexibility and your balance. And that's important any time in life. But as you mature, that becomes more important for you. So who is the typical student at the Fred Astaire Dance Studios? Uh, is it a lot of older people, maybe a lot of younger people, uh, men, women, 50-50 mix? Uh, what's the makeup like usually? Good question. So the general... Uh, Previous, you know, in, in past years, it used to be just older people, you know, that would be doing this. Maybe somebody in their 60s and such, you know, the widow or, you know, or something. But it has changed so much. I mean, we have, we have kids that are in high school wanting to learn how to dance, ballroom dance, to help them with their musical theater uh, background and, and such. We've got uh, young couples, obviously, getting ready for their wedding, wanting to learn how to do their first dance. We've got lots of, probably 50% of our students come in as single, you know, single students uh, without a couple. Maybe maybe their significant other doesn't want to learn how to dance, but they want to, that exercise, those benefits. And then we have, you know, and couples will come in to learn how to dance together. If, you know, they're going to a wedding maybe or, or some kind of social event. They've seen people dancing and they just want to, you know, they want to be able to get on the floor and know what to do also and feel comfortable that way. And that's that's our goal, is to have people feel comfortable on the dance floor. And it really doesn't take too long following our system. Um, but to answer your question, there is every variety. We have students that are in their 80s. We have students that are teenagers and, and even younger. Um, the majority of the students, I would say, are 40 and above. And uh, I read a quote from Fred, Fred Astaire on your website where he was saying that a good dancer is taught. He's, he learns how to dance. You're not born a great dancer. So I think there's a lot of people that are hesitant to think, well, you know what, I've had bad experiences. I think I have two left feet. But anybody, if they, you know, put their mind to it and the, and the time into it, they can become a good dancer, can't they? Exactly. I mean, many people think that just uh, being a dancer, you're born into that ability. And it's not necessarily true. Um, you know, and you may have had, you know, an experience maybe when you were younger, uh, you know, getting on the dance floor, dancing with someone, not really knowing what to do and feeling awkward. And that's why taking dance lessons, I mean, it's, it's going back to learning the fundamentals. You know, how do you lead somebody? How do you follow? Um, how do you, you know, what do you do for a particular song, you know, with the rhythm at a certain way? So it's learning the fundamentals and, and you practice it. And that's what we, what we do. Our teaching system helps students learn in an easy uh, way so that they can be on the dance floor and feeling comfortable. So, but it's just learning the fundamentals and most people um, have never learned how to partner dance, you know, so. So Evan, before we let you go, can you just uh, let everyone know exactly where your locations in West Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills are? Absolutely, so our West Bloomfield studio, it's at Walnut uh, Lake and Drake Road, um, right next to the Rite Aid and the, um, and the Soul Cafe. It's right into that shopping mall. And our Bloomfield Hill studio is on Franklin Road, just north of Square Lake in uh, Bloomfield, um, kind of near the Telegraph and Square Lake area, but on Franklin Road. So those two studios, very, very busy, very active. And our hopes, you know, we have another one in Clarkston, another in Oakland County, but we will be opening up even more studios. So look forward to working with anybody. Well, Evan, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, and thank you for all the hard work you do over there at the Fred Astaire Dance Studios. Well, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. That's Evan Mountain from the Fred Astaire Dance Studios in Bloomfield Hills and West Bloomfield. That's going to do it for us here on the Splash Live. I want to thank him and Steve Kaplan for joining us. I am Larry Nyland with Bloomfield. We'll see you tomorrow.